In this video, we're going to demonstrate root planing for a very small periodontal defect adjacent to the first molar on the left mandible in this dog. And if you look at that arrow, you can see right adjacent to the distal aspect of that tooth, the bone has a decrease in density that's very minor. However, there's granulation tissue in that defect that if left untreated or left where it wasn't removed would progress to the point where later down the road, six months to a year, that defect would become more significant. So we need to treat those. And they're very common back between the first and second molar and the mandible and the dog. So we need to look carefully back there, even in young dogs. And this dog is, is fairly young. This dog's four. And we're using a periosteal elevator to expose that area and then using a periodontal curette to remove that granulation tissue that I mentioned. And then you can see that right there on the tip of that instrument where we've scraped that out of that defect right on top or right in to the decrease in density area that you saw radiographically. So by removing that and then using a bone grafting material to replace that granulation tissue and potentially form a matrix for bone cells to grow into, we're not only eliminating the existing pathology, we're creating an ideal environment for the bone to regrow in that area. We'll show you another defect here shortly that we have post-op radiographs of with follow-up down the road that demonstrates that. Right here we're placing console, which is a bioactive silicate glass, which is a osteoconductive bone graft that we use to maintain the height of the bone where it exists now in the normal area adjacent to that defect. So we want to try to grow that bone back up to that normal area. And we can very predictably do that using these techniques. Now that's pointing to some of the granulation tissue that we got out of the defect, as you can see there. <clears throat> and we're using that peri uh, uh, periosteal elevator to pack that bone graft down in on the lingual side here make sure we've got good fill. And we may at times, depending on what that looks like, need to open up the lingual side as well to expose that to be able to visualize it in order to clean it out properly. Now what we're doing here is we're placing a, a horizontal or a vertical releasing or a, a horizontal or a vertical mattress suture pattern where we go from vestibular to lingual and back lingual to vestibular and tie to keep that bone graft in that defect and reoppose the gingiva up to the tooth. So you can see how we're doing that there using the papilla and then now we have in this case a horizontal mattress pattern that we're closing that with to oppose that little papilla up against the interdental space between those two teeth. Now if we leave that as it is with the bone graft there, that's not term guided tissue regeneration, but we can also use a membrane, in this case we'll use doxyrobe, as a physical membrane that will help block the epithelial downgrowth into that defect. So here we're placing doxyrobe into the defect in order to create a solidified material that will actually prevent the gum tissue from growing down into the defect and ruining our outcome. So we place the doxyrobe gel, we use our air water syringe to harden that partially and then we come back with our periosteal elevator and pack that on top of that bone graft. Now you can also create a membrane on a glass slab using doxyrobe, solidify it, and then place it as well in the open defect before you suture. 
And you may want to do that for larger defects in a small defect like this. Uh, this is a very simple technique that you can use with a product that you should already have in your practice if you're doing dentistry that we use just in gingival pockets in the attached gingiva to increase our uh, pocket uh, or decrease our pocket depth and increase the attachment of those periodontal pockets. So here we're, we're using again the periosteal elevator to help place that down on top of that bone graft. It also helps to seal that to make sure that none of the bone graft leaves that site. So here's before again and then here you can see after and you can actually see the defect a little better there on that radiograph. And then here's a pretty significant defect on another uh, on the right side. We've extracted that tooth and then we put a bone graft in there and then we have a post-operative view uh, that shows six months down the road. This is probably similar to what you see three months to six months down the road and then uh, from that point on. So I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a veterinary dentist. And if you like this video, I know you're going to love our 90-minute online training that we do monthly, which will take you through all the obstacles that you face in your dentistry service, get you through those, and make your practice more efficient. Join us by registering at the link that you see in this video or at veterinarydentistry.net slash YouTube.